And I would like to ask uh, Sir Gerald Faulkner to begin, because I know he has to be there. Yeah. Gerald Faulkner. Mr. President, thank you very much for inviting me and my colleagues here this evening at this extremely well attended meeting and I'm very glad indeed to be a co-sponsor of it. I represented the United Kingdom Parliament at a hearing in the United Nations at the end of November <clears throat> and the issue that we were dealing with was unresolved problems of the world. And I listed the Cyprus issue as one of the prime unresolved problems which have been allowed to continue for far too long. I have to say that the government of which I was then a member, uh, the Labour government in 1974, mishandled the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, did not react as strongly as it ought to have done. And the problem is that in these 35 years, and because we are in August approaching the 35th anniversary, we are faced with a fait accompli. We had a situation in which there was a kind of de facto recognition by the international community of the Turkish presence in Cyprus, uh, holding 37% of a neighboring state. And indeed, I remember very well indeed, taking the view that if we did not stand on this there was no point in standing on anything. We went through a very bad period, and that bad period, I have criticized my own government, that bad period took place during the previous Conservative government, when Malcolm Rifkin was Foreign Secretary, I heard him at the dispatch box say that there could be no question of Cyprus becoming a member of the European Union until the question was resolved. When our government came to office we reversed that and we supported the entry of Cyprus as a member of the uh, European Union and of course <coughs> Cyprus is indeed here today a member of the European Union, a member of the Commonwealth as well. And it's very, very important indeed that we look at that from this point of view. I remember when I first went to Cyprus very, very many years ago and travelled all over the island to Larnaca and uh, Famagusta and Curania freely with no problems. And now, of course, the island is divided and there are huge changes in the structure of the island. It's a curious fact that divided Cyprus, divided sovereign Cyprus, is a prosperous country, a prosperous member of the European Union, very much a destination for tourists from Germany and other countries looking for the sun. It's also a fact which is very sad that the Turkish Cypriots in the north of Cyprus are living in certainly comparatively <coughs> deprivation because of the fact that nobody except Turkey recognizes northern Cyprus and there is not the construction, there is not the economic development there. I have, on visits to Cyprus, always made a point of going to the north. I've always made a point of meeting <laughs> Turkish Cypriot trade unionists. And this situation is not of their creation. This situation is of the creation of the Turkish government. Yes, of course, 
there were errors at the time of the Turkish invasion and the Turks were able to use that as an excuse for their invasion. But there can be no excuse for invading another sovereign country, breaking international law and occupying it. I heard, I won't waste the time of the meeting here this evening, but I heard some very, very sad, semi-racist stories about the attitude of the Turkish Cypriots to the Anatolians who are, have been shipped in by Turkey into northern Cyprus. And one, again, one must not take the view that the Turkish Cypriots <coughs> welcome the presence of the Turkish soldiers. There is no reason whatsoever to believe that they want that. There is no reason whatever to believe that they want northern Cyprus to be a tax haven for people who are not always on the right side of the law. My own view is very, very simple. My government, and I am an almost sickeningly loyal supporter of my government, takes the view that it is desirable for Turkey to become a member of the European Union and puts that very high on its agenda. I take the view that I have absolutely no objection whatsoever to Turkey becoming a member of the European Union, provided that Turkey abides by international law and also provided that Turkey, something we don't discuss in relation to the Cyprus predicament, <coughs> provided that Turkey observes the elements of human rights in its, own in, it, in its own country. And we have documentation after documentation, right from my friend Alan Parker's uh, film, Midnight Express. We have documentation after documentation over the years of the abuse of human rights of Turks in Turkey. So let's be clear about this, certainly as I am concerned. I have no constituency interest in Cyprus. I think I've got one Greek Cypriot restaurant, which is a very nice restaurant, but I, I am not here tonight because I have large numbers of Greek Cypriots, or for that matter, Turkish Cypriots, in my constituency in Manchester. <coughs> I'm here because I believe that Cyprus for the international community is unfinished business. We have now had uh, Barack Obama as President of the United States uh, for several weeks and he has a lot on his agenda. But what is essential from President Obama and I hope that this, these will be issues which our Prime Minister will have been discussing with President Obama uh, in his visit to Washington this week. There is a kind of fantasy about the reliability of Turkey uh, to NATO and the uh, Western Alliance. 